Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us to meet the managers. Yes, it sounds like a bad Ben Stiller film, but hey, it's the best um the best title I could come up with, and I'm committed to the thumbnail now because I put that on the video. So away we go anyway. We're gonna have a look at the 24 managers who will start the campaign. Um, they may not finish the campaign, certainly all 24 of them won't, and history tells us that probably maybe 10 or more of them will be gone by the end of the season. That's just the deal in the Championship. Look, we can't even be certain those 24 will start the season, but we are just a few weeks away, and they probably will, so we'll get this video done here and now. It feels like everything sorted itself out now. Changes in all three of the Year 1 parachute jobs. We wondered whether with a few of those Premier League jobs being available during the Euros, maybe a Steve Cooper was going to step out. Um, a playoff manager did step out in Ishmael and then a new one in at Barnsley. And I think from then on out, we're all sorted with any other major changes having happened already into last season. We've got a lovely mixture from the youngest Wayne Rooney to the oldest Neil Warnock and... Plenty of calibre. We've got seven managers who've been promoted out of this division before. Parker, Mowbray, Pearson, McCarthy, Warnock, Hewton, Jukanovic and several others with League One, uh, League Two promotion winning campaigns as well. So plenty to talk about. Let's go in alphabetical order and start with Mr. Scott Parker who has gone across to Bournemouth. Parker, only 40, but a couple of years tenure now over at Fulham. He's only been in at Bournemouth for a few weeks, um, less than a month so far. Promoted with Fulham via the playoffs in 1920. And I've put there, got the job done, but some say unconvincingly. So he is pretty much, let me add this up. Yeah, he will be the most recent promoted manager out of this division, won't he? And um, yes, he did have Mitrovic. Yes, he did have a year one parachute payment, but he did the job. He went up to the Premier League and didn't quite work out. And I don't think it was quite working out with the owners over there at Fulham and seemed to be a bit of a fallout. But Parker goes in to replace Jonathan Woodgate at Bournemouth. Bournemouth is a year two parachute club. They lost in the playoffs to Brentford this past season. They've taken Mark Condes on a free from Brentford. So Parker has made a signing, but lots of rumours about possibly a Billing or a Dan Juma uh, going out. And it is a plum job because it is a parachute job, but we know that Bournemouth weren't in the best financial shape coming into last season. And certainly the sales of Ake Ramsdale and Wilson um, were very, very necessary from what we seem to know about their finances. In terms of Parker, the manager, um, I guess the accusation was um, overly methodical, maybe a little bit too slow in terms of build up. Certainly was ruthless in dismantling the team that got full and promoted and changing things up in the Premier League. But it didn't work in the end. And he was actually um, vocally complaining about loan players and too much of that type of thing. So if he wants continuity, there is the basis of lots of ex-Premier League players at Bournemouth. But the worry is always bridging that gap as those, those funds drip away the three years of the parachutes and those big Premier League bills that sometimes stay on the... Um, balance sheet for all of those three years and it feels like there's a ticking clock there doesn't it so there'll be pressure on Parker and I would suggest he's got a more difficult task than last time out at Fulham with Kenny and Mitrovic and Noka and Cavaliero and um, all of the gang along there Scott Parker is our first manager let me know your thoughts on him in the comments and across at Barnsley and we'll talk about Valerian Ishmael right at the end of the video. But this is his replacement, Marcus Shop, who is a 47-year-old. And 
I've put there standard Barnsley hire, plenty of experience in Austria, links to the Red Bull system, new to English football, and he's only been here a month or so. You can see he's been with the Sturm Graz second team and TSV Hartberg as well. Um, full disclosure, I'm recording this at 4 p.m. and I think he's at Rochdale um, or just finishing up a, a friendly today. So he's um, he's getting his feet wet um, at last and getting ready to go. But difficult one. We, we're in hard act to follow territory here because obviously um, I say typical Barnsley hire. We've had Daniel Stendel under this Barnsley ownership. We've had uh, Gerhard Struber. We've had Valerian Ishmael. Now we get Marcus Schopp. And, you know, I'm I'm fairly um, okay in saying when I don't know who somebody is and hadn't heard of this guy. To be fair, hadn't heard of any of the other guys when they came in. And uh, Barnsley seemed to have a, quote, type on paper. Um, if you're um, watching Love Island at the moment, you'll know what that means. And they've gone for that sort of manager again. It is a hard act to follow, isn't it? Fifth in the league last season. Um, maybe uh, Barnsley, the way they run and the way they recruit and all of that good stuff, maybe they will gradually become more and more viable. And with lots of kind of chaotic teams in the championship, maybe, you know, maybe they will in the natural order be a top half team. But it's tricky, this one for Marcus Schopp. Um, to match or get near a fifth place would be tricky. No, Alex Mowat as well. But hey, um, Barnsley have a habit of surprising us the past few seasons. So good luck to Marcus Shop. And I would say on this 24, he's the manager I know the least about. So if you've ever seen one of his sides kick one ball, you know more, more than me about the way they're, the way they're likely going to play. But um, if the lineage stays, then we'll have a fair... I did. May not be quite so rock and roll as Ishmael, but um, look, if it's halfway between Struber and Ishmael, then um, they'll be doing all right, won't they? Uh, get your thoughts on Marcus Shop. Only if you know something. Don't pretend. It's okay to not know anything about a manager. Uh, Lee Bowyer, we know lots about at Birmingham, age 44. Previously at Charlton, obviously played for both Charlton and Birmingham. Got Charlton promoted under awkward ownership, relegated the next season, survival impact at Blues last season. So, look, Bowie's a good manager, isn't he? I think if you said to most people, um, where don't you want to work <laughs> in terms of things making sense and not being too chaotic, Charlton would have been would have been an answer under the Duchatelet regime. And he gets them promoted. Um, I think they had a run the first season he was there. And then he takes them through the playoffs the next season. Um, difficult in the championship for many, many reasons. And Charlton ended up going down on the last day. And it was a slow descent, wasn't it? I think they won four out of the first six to put them quite well positioned. And then a couple of bad injuries and Lyle Taylor out for a long time and COVID hitting. And um, then all of the stuff with Wigan goes down and it goes to the last day. And I think they were in the wrong place at the wrong time on the last day where they were off at um, Leeds, weren't they? Who were uh, freewheeling their way to 92 or 94 points. I can't remember exactly. 93 maybe. I can't remember how many points Leeds got. But anyway, Charlton went down. Bowyer went with them. Was there most of last season. Went into Birmingham, who'd stunk the place out under Karanka. And what was really noticeable about what Lee Bowyer did, he had a huge impact um, he essentially just simplified everything, put Jukovic back in the team, got the ball up the pitch, made them hard to play against, um, didn't mind using long flows uh, from Roberts, set plays, etc. And they survived easily in the end. So he did a very good job. And the question is now, um, stylistically, does he do anything like that this season or do they try and develop? Because I think at their best um, under Charlton, they were... A pretty interesting side. They would play nicely on transition, would often play a front two and a 10, would bomb forward like Bowie used to as a player from central midfield. And I do remember Charlton in League One. They had Christian Bielik, who's a superb player, would move from centre back into central midfield or vice versa from a three to a four. So I think I think there's something there with um, Bowie. Let's just hope uh, Trillian, the ownership there. I know there's been a change of CEO 
Um, but does the leopard really change its spots? Let's hope they don't ruin what is potentially a, a pretty good fit with Bowyer and Birmingham. Let me know what you think in the comments. And here is Tony Mowbray, age 57, at Blackburn. Uh, joined, look at that, February 2017. Uh, so he's been there over four years, which is an eternity in championship terms. Not that he spent all his time with them in the championship because uh, he went in, I think it was Owen Coyle before him, and couldn't save Blackburn, but he could get them promoted straight back up from League One and came in and stabilised with sort of Bradley Dack and Danny Graham and it's kind of petered out a little bit since. And I suspect... Um, Mowbray may be the one manager here suffering from a bit of over-familiarity. And there was a bit of a sense last season with Harvey Elliott and Adam Armstrong in that team that they could have possibly finished a little bit higher up the table. Blackburn always struck me last season as a team that had good intentions and if they clicked, could go on a run, but just never did. And one of those ones where you looked at the metrics and saw lots of possession and lots of shots and thought... Um, yeah, this is, you sometimes see a good team with similar numbers, but they're not having the wins and the um, actual game management and things of that nature to back it up. Look at that, Hibs, West Brom obviously promoted out of the championship with West Brom. Celtic, back to his boyhood club, Borough. He couldn't get them up, could he? But Karanka then did. Uh, Coventry as well, Coventry fans, I think he had some very good players at Coventry. Madison and Fleck and Armstrong as well, in fact. Um, so... Doing better here at Blackburn, but whenever I ask people last season, oh, who, who do you think's in trouble next? And Mowbray's name would often come up. Look, I've got my Ipswich scarf up there. I'm a, I'm a big fan, but yeah, over familiarity here, and um, yeah, perhaps a a bad run at an inopportune point in the season. And he might be one of our, we think ten or so that will literally be guaranteed to be sacked during the season. But we will see. Let me know. What you think on Tony Mowbray? Can he get that to click? Will Adam Armstrong even be there um, at the start of the season once the um, transfer window has done its work? Here is Neil Critchley, a Blackpool, um, the Blackpool manager, who may be a new one to a few people. Critchley, 42. And if you weren't following... League One last season. You can see he arrived uh, during lockdown, March 2020, um, having worked for the Liverpool under-18s and under-23s. And in his first full season, took Blackpool into the playoffs and up. And I would suggest, I watched all the League One playoff games, they were comfortably the best side in the playoffs, weren't they? Kept a ton of clean sheets with Chris Maxwell in goal. Had um, Ballard on loan, who's now gone across to Millwall. They've signed a few players and very, um, you know, very front foot and two up top in the games. Um, Sims and Yates doing the business in the playoffs. And um, looks like a, a one to watch. He's he's won OK. I've seen more of his sides than I have of Marcus Shop, say, at Barnsley. But... Yeah, looks like a looks like an interesting one to watch, and very much feels like a Steve Cooper type um, cutting your teeth in a under 18s uh, type situation, and then coming in to a club and passing um, passing the same strategies through. So we'll see how a Blackpool do, but it's been a pretty perfect ride for him so far. One season. Promoted. Um, can't do too much better than that if you're in League One, can you? So I suppose you could have got up automatically, but you know what I'm saying, don't you? Uh, Neil Critchley, let me know if you can put any more meat on the bone in the comments on Mr. Critchley. And <laughs> there he is, look, for Bristol City. Cheers, Nige. Good old Nige. Nigel Pearson, age 57, the lovable, curmudgeonly, grumpy, but quite funny, um, Nigel Pearson, who's had loads of jobs. Look, Carlisle, Southampton. Leicester twice, famously. Hull, Derby, OH Leuven, Watford in the Premier League very, very recently, of course, has won this division before. We've Leicester also won uh, League One with Leicester as well. I put Stormy Start in Bristol. Um, new chief exec in, new manager. And Pearson came in, what was the date? February. 
and um, spanked a few backsides, let's just say. Uh, clear out was always going to be obvious and moving away from uh, Mark Ashton's reign there and on to, oh God, I forget the name of the new guy who's in there. Someone will tell me in the, in the comments. Uh, Pearson maybe wielded that and said, well, look, I can execute change now um, and I'm going to and some um, eviscerations of his team's performances at the end of last season, which we do know doesn't leave you much room for manoeuvre in the next season because you now need to bring your own players in and get a tune out of them. But uh, what we know about Pearson is that at this level, he's been very successful before. He doesn't suffer falls. He doesn't suffer anybody or anything. He's a frankly scary man. Uh, so we will see if the hard way still works here in 2021. If it does, Bristol City will be fine. And it's just that bad season now after some really steady progress um, down at Ashton Gate. So uh, the Bristol City fans are going to want that to um, be coming back. So, yeah, let me know how you think that one pans out. But uh, one, uh, well, another, we've already had Parker and uh, Mobra as well, another of our um, promotion on the CV managers here. Let me know how you see Pearson doing. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button and to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.